A vile force of darkness has arrived. <laughs> no, you got to be kidding me. My fall is in the hospital fighting for his life. We have just opened up our outer wall to connect our new fortress entry and our old entry building. And there are a few dwarfs outside, and we've just bought a bunch of animals who are all grazing outside. And now we get a siege? <sighs> okay, now well, let's see how bad it is. So, looking outside we can see a bunch of goblins standing on the edge of our map, very close to our walls. There are probably more of them still waiting to enter the map. Eleven goblins are already standing at our wall. Most of them train military goblins as well. This is going to be a tough fight. I don't think we can just take the siege head on. Let's close up all the bridges we can and see how many goblins enter the map in total. I hope the dwarfs working outside can make it indoors quick enough, but well, if they don't, well, we just can't afford to wait for them. If these goblins make it inside, huh, well, let's just not think about that for now. I'm pausing the game. Okay, luckily there aren't a whole lot of dwarfs outside. I think they'll make it in. Yeah, the bridge closes and I don't think any of the dwarfs are still outside. Our grazing animals haven't been so lucky, but well, nothing can be done about that now. About 40 goblins have entered the map. Our military is only 20 dwarfs big. This is going to be a huge problem. The goblins run in straight away and begin slaughtering our animals. Bolts are flying all over. They make quick work of our grazing animals, and after that, they siege our entrance, waiting for an opening. Now, how are we going to deal with this? Let's take a look at our options. We could attack them in our courtyard, but that's not a viable option. We could connect our new entry building. The building itself is done. We've dug a tunnel all the way to the entry, but we've just not connected it yet. Then we can force the attack for our trapped hallway. Well, the thing is though, we haven't actually gotten around to trapping the hallway yet. Also, our dwarves wanted to close off the fortress with a bridge system, but right now the invaders could just run straight in. So, we have to close off our entry and force the invaders into our hallway. We need to get a few traps up in there as well. Also, we'll have to have a place nearby where we can dump all the corpses. One way or the other, there's going to be a lot of mess in here. A lot of corpses lying around and, well, let's be honest, no dwarf wants to see that. So we have to clean up the mess quickly before our dwarves all go crazy. Alright, plenty of work to do, so let's get to it. First, let's connect our new entry. This is going to be exciting because all the goblins are standing not far from our entryway. If we left a hole somewhere, this is going to be a bad idea. But I think we closed everything off and this seems to confirm it. The siegers remain standing in our courtway. Good. Now we need to build a raising bridge to close off our main fortress and a room where we can drop off all the corpses. Still keeping an eye out for the siegers, but they remain standing there, just looking around for a way in. Stupid goblins. Alright, our corpse room is dug and our entry bridge is built. Let's test it out. Pull the lever. Here we go. Ah, oh, seven, damn it. We made the same mistake again. The dwarves forget to set the bridge to raise properly. Now it just retracts away, leaving an opening. Okay, never mind. We just close off the entry with a wall. At least we can screw this up. We'll add in a few traps and at the same time we'll dig a little garbage hole to drop the goblin corpses when we're done. Well, <laughs> I hope they'll be goblin corpses. Okay, I think we're just about done. We could just wait and do some more traps, but I don't want to wait too long. We need to teach these goblins a lesson. We'll station the military here in the hallway, and as soon as the first goblin rears its ugly head, we'll charge into them. Alright, let's pull the lever to open the bridge into our entryway. There we go, and the bridge is open. Hey, where did the goblins go? Did they leave? Oh no, there they are. Maybe they were hiding in the hills, hoping to draw us out. 
But with the bridge open, they are making their way inside. Let's close off the bridge as quickly as we can. I'm hoping we'll trap a few inside before the main force can make it in. Uh oh, uh, it's a lot of them. I think all but one of them made it in. Close to 40 goblins are making their way inside. The military is grabbing their weapons closely. Through the tunnels we can hear the goblins snarling and we hear their war drum banging. Here they come. They are making it through the little tunnels. Sadly, some of the traps weren't even loaded yet. One of our dwarves was hurrying in to load a trap, but runs away as soon as the first goblin makes it around the corner. Oh, this is tense. Get ready, dwarves. One of our traps goes off. A huge boulder comes crashing down on a goblin. Blood fills the hallway. Another one. The force of the impact hurls the goblin into the wall. Alright dwarves, charge! The goblin that just got hurled across the hallway is met with a rain of axes and spears. He is quickly dealt with. Alright dwarves, back to the beginning of the hallway. Get ready for a new charge. The other goblins start feeding into the halls, stepping over their fallen brethren. That has to put some fear into their minds, right? Alright, charge my brave dwarves, for the honor of merchant slipped. There they go. The goblins feed in one by one and are immediately surrounded by three or four dwarves hacking into them. Goblin corpses and body parts are flying around. Our military dwarves enter into a state of martial trance. They are just hacking off goblin parts left and right. They enter the trapped hallway. Oh, oh no, don't do that. That's giving up our advantage. Retreat! Back into the hall. Get ready for a third charge. Moral grabs a few of our squad mates. Get back you stupid idiots! Back into the hallway. We have an advantage there. A kitten doesn't understand all the commotion and runs around the corner, quickly being killed by one of the goblins. Most dwarves are retreating though. Good. We need to fight them in the open. Zan Ikutsigun, one of the mercenary marks dwarves, doesn't retreat though. Ah, uh, he lost the ability to stand. He's badly hurt. Crap. He's lying there, right in the furthest point of the hallway. We can't wait, he's surely going to die if we wait. <sighs> Alright dwarves, let's finish this. Charge! The dwarves funnel into the narrow hallway. Zahn is already fighting. He can't stand, but he won't go down without a fight. His military mates join him, and they move through the hallway, cutting down goblins left and right. They seem to be making progress. Yes! Things are going great. Before long the battle is over. The winded dwarves stand in a corridor filled with goblin corpses. But we've broken the siege. We are victorious. Zahn has been hurt pretty badly. Also Enoch Feshmosis has had his arm torn open and his spine bruised. Urdim has a cut open arm as well, but that's just the physical wounds. Mentally all the dwarves carry the wounds of battle as well. Most dwarves are distressed, afraid or horrified after all the carnage. While in battle they enter a martial trance, but well, once that wears off they find themselves standing amongst death and destruction. Ah, okay, I'll let you guys off duty to recuperate. The rest of the dwarves can start cleaning the place. How's he doing doc? Well, he lost his foot and his legs were cut open, so I had to sew those shut. His arms were hurt and his spleen is still bruised, but I think he should survive. Slowly, Mafal opens his eyes. Doc and Sazir are standing by his bed. Sazir is holding his hand. Hey there, how are you doing? What happened? Where's the crocodile? Hey, 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 take it easy. Obok handled the crocodile, don't, don't overexert yourself. It's good to see you back, Mafal. Doc takes a last look at Mafal and moves on to the other dwarves in need of medical assistance. Sazir strokes Mafal's beard. J just rest and take it easy. The duck will take care of you. You'll need crutches, but you'll be okay. We'll help you if needed. Oh man, my leg! Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, but you've lost your leg to the crocodile. Okay, I need to talk to Sodal as soon as possible. Yeah, 
about that. It's been a while since you've been out, and some things happened while you were out. What do you mean? What happened? Well, first of all, we've been under attack. A goblin siege came while you were out, and we managed to kill them all. We lost Zahn to the attackers, but otherwise we've only suffered some wounds here and there. Nothing major. Okay, while well, we knew they were coming, the liaison has warned us. Uh, exactly, and some of the dwarves weren't too happy with the fact that Sodal didn't prepare our fortress better. Also, the siege came while we were most vulnerable, because we were just moving our outside wall perimeter. Uh, that couldn't have been Sodal's fault. He didn't know that they would come that quickly. We need stability. Let me talk to the dwarves. I'll talk some sense into my fall. You have been out a while. There have been new elections and, well, it was absolute chaos. There were 17 candidates. Everyone was bickering in public. Even Apasi and Liliyi, the elven poets, were running. Ha! <laughs> Elves leading our fortress? That's rich. Okay, but who won the election then? Well... Yeah, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but Apasi, the elf, won the election in the end. What? Are you telling me? Aardwarfs elected an elf? What the hell is going on here? Yes, Apasi won by a small margin, and Liyi was the runner-up. They are both very sociable and promise security and order. They had very compelling speeches. I did not found this fortress for it to be run by an elf. We have to do something about this. As Mafal is screaming, he feels lightheaded. Mafal, oh, please just focus on your own recovery for now. We'll deal with the elves later, okay? Mafal grumbles and rests his head on a pillow. An elf running our fortress. A week later, we can see Mafal leaving the hospital. He is on crutches because he can't stand without his right foot, but at least this way he can move around. He came very close to losing him. <sighs> and now, finally, a little time to breathe again. It's been non-stop carnage for quite a while now. We've lost one dwarf in the siege. Zan Ikutsigun didn't make it. He was the dwarf who was on the floor in the edge of our hallway. Otherwise, just some wounds here and there, but uh, we've made it. A lot of time has passed in the meantime, and the elf Apasi has been elected as mayor. Apasi is one of the first of his kind and is as old as our world is. He has the appearance of someone that is 312 years old. With elves being immortal and all, that's not necessarily a very remarkable thing, but he has been around to see our world being shaped. He's been a member of quite a few civilizations as well. I guess that's to be expected as well with that kind of age. With his age he learned a lot of social skills and that is no doubt the reason that he's been elected as mayor. There are quite a few dwarves that are not happy with this election though. A dwarven fortress being ruled by an elf? Yeah, that doesn't sit well with most. Kubuk and Ilral have been meeting in dark alleys and corners of a fortress talking about an accident that might happen to a posse. The problem is, we can't push Apasi into the Magma Forge now because Liyiyi is the runner-up in the election, and according to Dwarven law she will inherit the title of mayor straight away. You're right. We'll have to be smart about it, boss. Exactly. We need to wait until the new elections. We need to put a better candidate in place and support them, and when they have enough votes to at least be second, we'll make sure Apasi has a little... accident. Yeah, stupid elf. Everything is going to hell with her around. We'll teach her. Yes, we will. We just have to be patient, Kubuk. We'll have to be patient. The most important thing for us to do right now is to clean up the remnants of the siege. The dwarves are busy dumping all the corpses into the hole we dug in this room here. We need to hurry up doing that because the corpses will decay and it'll start to emit miasma soon. Seeing all these corpses laying around is enough to make any dwarf depressed, but having a cloud of miasma will only make things worse. Luckily we got everything in place before the siege actually started, so the cleanup shouldn't take too long. We've also come very close to losing my fall. 
The caverns are a constant source of trouble, but like I said in the previous episode, there's a lot of copper down there, so the dwarves can't really close them off forever. For now, we've had enough action for a little while, so I'll keep them sealed. While all this was going on, our dwarves haven't been sitting still. Most of the backlog of hauling tasks have been done, and our dining room is done. It looks awesome. All the orthoclase furniture and statues standing around look really good. We'll add some golden decorations in the future. Our new tavern is coming along nicely as well. We still need some furniture hauling for the last couple of chairs, but otherwise it's about done. I think it's time to move some of our stockpiles and workshops down here. As we're watching our dwarves build the first couple of workshops in the new fortress area, we get a message that traders have once again visited our trade depot. Very good. We'll trade away some of our food and worn out clothes. In return we'll get all kinds of good stuff. A bunch of animals once again, some drinks, you name it. We're really starting to have some very nice trades. Very good. We tell the liaison about our attack to get the news out to the mountain homes as well. We need to prepare for war. As our trade is being concluded, we can take a look at our new stockpiles. In our new area, the dwarves won't be using the one big stockpile for everything, but will separate all different types of items. Here we can see our dwarves busy hauling wood to the dedicated wood stockpile, and weapons and armor into their respective stockpiles as well. This way, the bins that are being used to collect items will all store the same type of item, which will make trading a bit easier. Also, we'll have a much better indication of how much we actually have of everything. It's a big hauling job to move all of our items around, but our dwarves recognize that it's important moving forward that we keep our stuff separated. While our dwarves are busy rearranging our stockpiles, we get the message that a baby has been born. The Duke Libashinol is a dwarven baby girl. <laughs> That's great! It's a friend for Saxel, the elven baby born earlier. The Duke is the first child of Moses Suntirutun, one of our fortress's haulers, and Zutan Zonanem, another one of our haulers. Both of the parents are feeling adoration after becoming a parent. Both of them were in the bulbous berries when the Duke was delivered as well. What a happy sight. They are one big happy family. The Duke is a strong baby as well. Looks like she might grow up to do great things in life. <laughs> we'll see. Moving on, we set our dwarves up to work on our entrance. We are taking away some of the scaffolding we have up there, and we're building our bridge. This time we made extra sure to set it up correctly, so it should be working now. The dwarves have also decided to make a few more traps. As the dwarves are busy building the entryway, we get a message. Apasi Fexisiniwara, our mayor, has been found dead. What the hell? What happened? As I go to investigate, I find Kubuk standing over the bloody corpse of Apasi in her bedroom. What happened here? Looking at the combat report and kill screen, we can see that Kubuk is indeed the killer of Apasi. What happened is, Kubuk has been feeling very stressed lately, so much so that he looks haggard and drawn. And he's throwing a tantrum. In that tantrum, he bashed Apasi's skull in with his fist. He only hit her twice, but Apasi's head has been reduced to a lump of gore. Oof. Gruesome. Now what I think happened is Kubuk wanted to have a meeting with Apasi to complain about his horrible life here, and Apasi felt that it was bedtime. So ignoring Kubuk's pleas for a meeting, she went to bed, leaving Kubuk standing in her office. I guess that was the final straw, and Kubuk decided to punch her to death. He was one of the dwarves earlier plotting to kill her, but I didn't expect this to happen. The question is, what do we do now? We have a dwarf who is very stressed and strong, and who is obviously not feeling very well. Quite frankly, he's a liability right now, and I think we just have to exile him from the fortress. We can't have more of these problems, and the poor guy is obviously traumatized from the battles he's seen earlier. Here we can see him standing near the scene of the crime. Uh oh, I just realized. Li Yi, the other elven poet, has taken Apasi's place as mayor of our fortress. And to my surprise, one of the first things she decided to do is, well, go to sleep. Now she's gotten the mayor's quarters, and upon going to sleep, she noticed Kubuk standing over the bloody bed with Apasi in it. The walls and floors and bed all dripping with blood, and a very traumatized and angry dwarf standing right there. And she decided, in all of her wisdom, to just go to sleep in that very same bed, with Kubuk standing right there, demanding a meeting to talk about what just happened. 
Oh, this can't end well. Luckily, Li Yi wakes up and attends to Kubuk. Here we can see him wandering around, going from temple to temple, just oh, feeling miserable. Li Yi calls a meeting with Moral. Hey, Moral, uh, I need your counsel. Kubuk has been feeling particularly depressed lately, and in a fit of rage, according to his own words, he smacked Apashi on the head uh, a few times. I don't have to tell you where we found her and in what state she was in, laying in a pool of blood with well, Kubuk standing right next to her. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, I know. So, um, what can we do about this? Unless you can guarantee me that this won't happen again, I think we have no choice but to expel Kubuk from the fortress. Oh, well, it, it just doesn't feel right. He's been at our side fighting with the goblins. I mean, we've both seen things that can turn any dwarf insane. Yeah, and, and I'm empathetic to that, of course. And thankful for both your service, but... We cannot allow the thing we fight to keep outside of our walls inside. If he can't control his emotions... Well, it sounds to me you don't really need counsel at all. You've already made your mind up anyway. Well, I just don't see any other way. Well, at least let Irrel tell him. They've been friends for years now. Yeah, that, okay, we'll do that. Hi boss, I took care of our little problem. Oh, you idiot. You weren't supposed to do this. We would wait until the next elections. But uh, we hate the stupid elves. And I got rid of one of them. To just one more to go. I'm afraid we can't solve this problem the way that you want, Obuk. The other elf is mayor now and she has decided to expel you. But she can't do that. Uh, I'm a dwarf. Yeah, I know and I agree, believe me. But well, she has the support of the military and we can't just well, ignore that. So, so, so what are you saying? Do I need to leave? <sighs> yeah, I'm afraid you do. I can't help you. I understand. I'll hide in the caverns and when Li Yi is asleep, I will do the same to her that I did to a posse. The caverns are dangerous, don't do that. Just go to... <laughs> no worries for Kubuk, I will go and I'll be back. No, 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 Kubuk, wait! wait. <sighs> and with that, we've come to the end of the episode. 10 episodes of Merchant Slipped. The response to this episode has been great. It has motivated us to keep going. We are going to take a little break from this series though. It's a lot of work getting these episodes up every two weeks and this week we even missed the deadline. We're going to take it easy for a few weeks and intend to return for a new batch of episodes sometimes in the future. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for following us while we're learning how to do this and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye bye.